today we are going to talk about bum, ba, da, rum, Sutton Foster and her new book, Wow, Hooked, or How Crafting Saved My Life. And you're a big crafter. I'm a big crafter, so this book was like calling to me. And who doesn't love... Sutton, Sutton Foster. Foster. She's like, if you don't know theater, you at least know Sutton Foster. Absolutely. So she, it, for those of you who may not have heard of her, she started dance classes when she was four years old. I don't know that. And very early in her life, I think she was still like maybe 16, 17, young, her brother actually had already landed a role in on Broadway and like in a touring group and so she obviously comes from good talent yeah. genes and she incur she was encouraged to go try out for a dance part in Will Rogers Follies and she got it and wow. actually started touring at that particular time after she after she traveled with that for a while she took one year and went to Carnegie Mellon at, for wow. a theater degree she only went one year wow. because then she auditioned for a part in Greece mm. and she got the role of Marty which is an edgy pink lady yeah and she actually was let go from that part because they said you know you're kind of come across as this sweet innocent southern girl and you're just having a hard time playing that edgy part so they let her go and then just a few days later the girl who was playing Sandy who is the good girl that goes bad in Greece got sick or something happened so they called her in to replace Sandy and then she toured and traveled with that so that was kind of the early big roles that Sutton wow. Foster had but the thing that I think is really interesting about Sutton is that she got offered to tour with a Broadway traveling group to play um, Eponine in Les Mis mm -hmm. and turned it down to be an understudy for the person who was playing Millie in Thoroughly Modern Millie when that was about to hit the Broadway stages. And they actually, her agent was like, what are you doing? Wow. You have a, a full-time star job. And she, this is what she said in the book. She said, I had so much more to learn and I wanted to be in the room with the people that I could learn it from. And so I felt like I had to take the role. I love that because wow. I think sometimes we think it's all about being the star mm -hmm. and here's somebody who was a star or mm -hmm. could have been a star. And mm -hmm. she's like, nope, I have more to learn. I'm just gonna be the understudy, wow. which ready to stand in, the person who yeah. might have to go in. Well, days before they were supposed to open, something happened and I don't know whether they like Sutton better or what happened, but she got promoted and she became the star of Thoroughly Modern Millie, which did become her breakout role. Yep, that, that's why most people That was where her. people yep. started noticing her because she went on from that and starred as Joe in Little Women and Marion mm -hmm. in Music Man. And she was Fiona. And, and she was in Fiona Shrek. and Shrek. So pretty much all the big roles that have come out lately, Sutton Foster yep. is one of the people that have been in it. She's a triple threat. But the thing that I thought was really interesting about the book is um, several different things. We think of of somebody who's been really successful as having a carefree life. Mm. And actually just the title of How Crafting Saved My Life lets you know that there was something else going Jesus on, Jesus. right? Yeah. Um, her mother, she has the disease where you don't want to go out. Uh, yes, agoraphobia. Well, they didn't know when Sutton was younger, she hadn't been really officially diagnosed. And so she um, she said her mom only, never saw any of her Broadway's plays except for one. And she would still go out every opening night and scan the audience and hope that she would come anyway. My heart literally is breaking. Yeah, it's so sad. And uh, other things where her mom was constantly mean to her, like tearing her down. Like, why do you think the world is going to love you? You're this, you're that. But it was her defense and trying to to cope with being left out of things, yeah. I guess. And yeah. so uh, Sutton talks about her journey and talks about, she says that the reason that she wrote the book was to help her understand her mother. Her mom has, has since passed away and it's it's a very, very sad thing in the book because I think it really probably could have been 
prevented, but because yeah. she no didn't allow people to see her yeah. and go places, yeah. then it, it yeah. just didn't happen. So I, I can't imagine what it would be like to write a book just to help you understand cope. your mom yeah. and to cope. But she said she wanted to do that and she wanted to, to make the most of the good memories. And I think the thing I walked away from is I might hate my mom. Like when she talks about all these really mean things that her mom has done in the wow. book. But when you get to the end of it, you realize she really loves her. And she's kind and gracious to her at the end of the book. And I'm like, that is an amazing person that wow. you can realize that my mom was sick. Yeah. And yes, I bore pain my whole life and was fearful because of how my mom treated me and people that she would bring home and how mean people were to her because of her mom. And yet she still walked away from the end of it and said, I really love my mom and I miss her. And she made me the person that I am because she pushed me. She, she's the one that encouraged me and my talent. But even more than that, she taught her crafting. Wow. And so she interjects the whole story with like blankets and cookies that they made and things like that. So it's just, it's a really special story. And I know that in this day and age, we all have things that we are anxious about mm -hmm. and things that we struggle with. And I just wonder how much it would help if we crafted. Ooh. So she talks about how mean people were to her in full Rogers Follies mm. because she, you know, here she's the new girl yeah. and yeah. everybody else is trying out and she's this dancer who does everything right. Yep. And so that's when she would like, the way she survived was to like take her knitting or her cross stitch or whatever and go wow. sit by herself and wow. just do it because yeah. she wasn't accepted as yeah. any of the friends. And even when she became a lead later on, you would think, okay, now she's the lead. So everything's going to be okay. Well, then the producers started talking to her and they're like, you're not social enough. So you need to invite people out for lunch and you need to have parties for the cast and you need to do this. And so it just seemed that she never could really, wow. she was trying to be loving yeah. and supportive, but she just kept doing it wrong, wow. you know, probably because her mom yeah. and the way she was And we raised. just assume that leads are going to act a certain way. Like, hey, you've, yep. been giving a, you've been given a lead. Now you need to act this way to these people, that way to that yeah. people. And she's like, I'm just human yeah. with a lot of trauma. Well, yes, exactly. Wow. And honestly, a lot to be intimidated by and yeah. a lot to be jealous yeah. of. Yeah. And she's, she's crazy talented. Yeah. So, I mean, she might be another one of my fangirl. Let me snoop around and oh, follow her. Amazing. It's like, I would love to spend five minutes in the room yeah. with her and yeah. see if she's as wonderful and as nice as she seems like they she is. They say she is. I have a friend yes. who is in theater school and she came and did a little oh, class really? with them. Yeah. And he said, incredible. Like, yeah. so talented, but also very kind. Yeah. Which is, that that's amazing. It's like, I like to hear stories like that. I don't right. like it when I think an actor. And then people are like, they're yeah. jerks. And you're like, oh. Because really, honestly, let's face it, if we didn't like them and we weren't fanning over them, then what? You know, we wouldn't buy the tickets to go sure. see them wherever they sure. were. So they need us, right? They need us. You need my money. Yeah. So, wow. but anyway, um, I don't know if, I think the book is really about um, following your dreams mm. because it talks about how she kept rising to the occasion because it was the one thing mm. that brought her joy mm. and brought her satisfaction. Mm in a world of chaos of, yeah. you know, even being right. brokenhearted at the way that her mom treated her older brother. Wow. And she had to, to learn to, to get to a place that she realized that wasn't her fault. Wow, that's and, deep. And I think that it would really help a lot of people who may feel anxiety mm -hmm. for different reasons to maybe take a moment to journal about the things that you have going on in your life. And maybe that helps you come to some kind of understanding mm -hmm of why people are the way they are. I think we sometimes we put too much expectation on this is the way sh you should act and this is the way you should treat me and talk to me. Yep. And because you didn't do that, I'm hurting. Now, obviously hers was much more serious, yeah. but I do think that sometimes writing about it helps us understand that we're not all from the same place and yep. maybe you have things that are going through, you that you are going through yep. that I just have no way of understanding. Yep. And yep. someday, you know, communication will help us figure that out. Amen. So, and it sounds anyway. like it's great for child trauma. I think a lot of people have a lot of feelings when it comes to parents. Yeah. And even in like my generation, I've seen so much just distance from your parents if you 
think that they didn't do a perfect job and not understanding how to work through those emotions. But it sounds yeah. like even not as a believer, she was yeah. able to work through the emotions yep. of my mom was not perfect. Yes. And she made me, quote, the way I am, but also Sutton got to choose who she was going to be right. as mm-hmm. an adult. And I think a lot of times we miss that where we're like, oh, no, our parents made us the way they, we are and it's their fault versus, oh, it was their first time parenting yeah. and they were going through a lot. Yeah. It sounds like her mother was going through a lot. I, I definitely, like talking to my own children, and I know you just recently did an interview with your mom and you might want to link that down below, but I definitely think that it's interesting mm. to hear things that I did and how my kids interpreted it and mm. said, oh no, you were mean or you did this or mm. no, you never let us do this. And I was like, really? Mm. I, I mean, and I just remember it so differently yep. because as you said, we're all just doing the best that we yep. can. And I was being a mom based yeah. on what I thought I was supposed yep. to do. And, and even so much, you're going off of so much expectation and pressure that kids never even know. Yeah. So we're just seeing it like, oh, this is how you're affecting me, not, oh, because we can't do that. We're not logically right. capable yet to yes. say, mom's under pressure. Mom's doing this right. the first time. Like, that's not how it is. So it's interesting to have those conversations as adults. Yes, absolutely. So if maybe this will spur you on to even have a conversation with your parents and get to a place that you're like, now, why did you make that decision? And and give your parents grace. I'm like, I'm speaking from it like as the parent because I know I made mistakes, right? And I thought about that a little bit through that, mm. reading the book too. It's like, I I know that I didn't always make the right decisions yeah. because I, as I said, I was just doing the best that I could. Yeah. So I would hate it if one day my kids sit down and write a book and talk about all the bad things that I do. Mom. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Which they could, I'm sure. And... I would just really like it if they talked to me about it now, right? Instead yeah. of after that. Yeah. Um, even though she did it with so much grace. She really did. You you brought up something about her not being a believer, and she's not. Like, her parents definitely had a religious mm. foundation, mm. but it was more that they went to church on Christmas yeah. and Easter, yeah. and they said, good girls don't date people that take drugs or mm. whatever the big rules yeah. of their life were. And so it's really interesting too, as she gets exposed to other people, how the world and mm. the people that she's around start to influence her and awaken her to lots of different things. Wow. It'd be interesting just to hear that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So, and, and again, that's one of the things that I'm always telling you guys about, make sure you know where your line is yep. before you go professional or to other yep. theaters because there are always people yep. that are waiting to say, oh, no, 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 you need to smoke this marijuana. You need to do whatever. My takeaways from this book is that she crafts out of love. This is an excerpt from her book, and I thought this was really interesting for all of you who are thinking about being actors or actresses. Um, so actors often talk about the fraud factor. Mm. We're also afraid that people will realize that we don't actually know what we're doing. We spend a lot of time living in this ambiguous place of discovery where you have to fail in order to succeed. And I was just simply failing. On my way home from a tech rehearsal right before we started previews, I was walking through Times Square when I called my agent, Stephen, in a panic. And I said, I will not fail. I will not fail. I screamed into the phone. I thought I was going to be fired. Or if not, then definitely panned in the New York Times when the show opened. And I thought I was already letting everybody down, the cast, the director, the producers, and was destined to ruin my career. The truth was I I desperately wanted to quit. And that would have been easier. And so I think it's really interesting to know, again, the Sutton Foster has moments wow. that she feels like she's a failure and she's got the world on her shoulders and that she is holding everybody else up and that she is incapable of doing it because she's simply not good enough. So um, it's a good lesson for all of us to realize that yeah. no, not people aren't perfect, even yeah. the ones that you think are. So I hope that you will follow us and talk to us about other things that you'd like to see, hear, read about. Um, we're trying to keep you abreast of all things that are new and fun in theater and to spread our minds about how we think about it. So thank you for joining us today. Until next time, it's just me. And me. Talking to you from, from the, the wings. wings. Boom. Boom. So... You didn't say much on that one. I didn't well, let you talk. I didn't know much I was yeah. going to say because yeah. I didn't really read the book. Yeah. It was good, though.